Have you ever wondered how to properly set up routing for Superior Drummer 3, Easy Drummer, something like Native Instruments Battery inside Ableton so you can use all of the features of those third-party VSTs in the software? Well, in this video, we're gonna dive deep and clarify all of that stuff. Hey yo, it's Alex from Meta My Music, and as always with this channel, it's my mission to help you, the artists, produce themselves by developing their mindset, expanding their creativity, and connecting to their inner artist in a deeper way. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna dive deep into how to set up Superior Drummer 3 with multiple outputs in Ableton, as well as how to assign it to a drum rack so you can play around with something like the Push 2 or another pad type controller and make the most out of those two worlds. So I've been asked this question quite a few times about how to set up a third party VST plugin such as Superior Drummer, Easy Drummer, or something like Native Instruments Battery inside Ableton with multiple outputs. So you can actually use all of the features of those plugins inside Ableton as well as how to use it within the Ableton ecosystem with Drum Rack. So in this video, we're gonna dive deep and start from scratch by setting that up with Superior Drummer 3, but all of the steps will be the same regardless what VST plugin you're using, all right? So let's go ahead and transition. All right, so you can see my hands, you can see the DAW, and we're gonna start off with Superior Drummer. All right, so before we dive into this, let's just talk about why we might want to do this in the first place. So I have a single MIDI track here, and I'm gonna load up Superior Drummer 3 directly onto this track okay so i'm just gonna click drag it here boom all right so i've loaded superior drummer 3 on a midi track and what pops up on the push 2 is a typical keyboard layout however this is a drum instrument and it would be a lot more useful to me to be able to use superior drummer 3 in a drum rack as well as be able to use all of the different outputs that it has on individual audio tracks for post-production mixing so I can add effects to only the snare, over the only the overheads, room track, whatever it may be. So if we look in this mixer, you'll see that we have all of these different channels for all the different parts of the kit. However, the problem is all of this mixing capability lives within the plugin. Because if I go ahead and play uh, some notes on the push two here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and you'll see that as I hit different notes on this drum pad, first of all, I don't really know where any of the notes are. I don't know where the kick is. I don't know where the snare is. And all of the audio, whether I'm hitting a snare, a kick, overheads, is all coming through this one channel, which is not very useful to be able to use all of the powerful routing features and different mics and all these different groups that we can have within Superior Drummer or whatever plugin you're using that has multiple outputs. So the whole purpose of this is to be able to use this function, but inside Ableton so we can bring it into our normal workflow. All right, so let's get started. We've actually done the first step, but I'll just reiterate it real quick. The first thing you wanna do is create a MIDI track and then you wanna click and drag Superior Drummer 3 or whatever plugin you're using onto that MIDI track. And then you wanna open it up and pick the kit that you wanna play with, all right? So I'm just gonna stick with the default kit in Superior that loads this, uh, it's kind of like a funky kit, it's pretty simple, stripped down, um, just to keep it simple for now. But you can go ahead and explore and play around and find the kit that you wanna do this with. All right, and for now, we're just going to close this and the next step that we're gonna do is just right click on the plugin itself and you're gonna go group to drum rack. So what this does is it grouped this plugin inside a cell of the drum rack, okay? So we're getting closer to where we wanna go, but you'll see that the whole plugin is living within one cell of this drum rack, okay? That's not really what we want, but this is a good first step. Oh yeah, all right, so after that, the next step you wanna do is open up what is called your chain selector on your drum rack, okay? And you can find that, this tiny little button right here, right, that little guy, boom. Open that up and you'll see that we have this whole other menu open up and we also wanna turn on this IO button afterwards as well to expand that menu some more. All right, so once you have an instrument in a drum cell, you can click on that drum cell to bring up whatever instruments live inside it and here's Superior Drummer 
that appears right beside the drum rack. And let's open this up, and you'll notice that if I play different notes on this kit, like the snare, the kick, toms, whatever it is, they're all coming through this single cell on the drum rack. And that's not re really what we want. We want all of the notes that we play to go on different pads, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and close this, and the next step that you wanna do is click this receive play. So right now, it's only getting information. Superior Drummer is only receiving C1 of MIDI information, right? But we want to change this to all notes. So you scroll all the way to the top, hit all notes. All right, so once we've changed this to all notes, that's an important step. Now, all of the pads on my push to are hitting different parts of the kit, right? It's been spread out to all sorts of different pads. So this is great. So if that's just what you wanted to do, if all you wanted to do is be able to play all the different articulations and um, information in your plugin with a push controller or something similar, you could stop here and you could record stuff from here, sequence it in and go from there. All right, so this is awesome. However, having all of these grayed out pads and no information on these pads isn't really useful. So what we can do is actually create new chains for each hit. So the way you can do that is to select a cell and then we're gonna go ahead and create chain. Okay, and you'll notice that this cell is triggering C1. All right, these are connected. And if we actually change this, all right, so once we've created this chain, you'll notice that whatever note it's placed on, right now it's C1, will automatically map to C1 in your plugin. So in Superior Drummer, C1 equals the bass drum. Okay, so we can do that, and then we can click here, Command R to rename it, and rename it Kick, right? And then from there, we can actually just hold Option and drag it to another cell, and keep doing this for all the elements of our kit so that we can have some more information and do some more fun things with it later. All right, so you can keep it as simple or go as complex as you want in terms of mapping out these pads to Superior Drummer or whatever plugin you're using. I'm just gonna keep it simple for now. And we have at least some basic elements to get us started like our kick, some snare, some hi-hat, and that's good to go for now. All right, so the next part is super cool, and this is creating drum racks inside drum racks. I love how meta that is. But what you can do is you can select certain groups here. So let's say you have multiple snares. You can select those. I've got a stick over here. So what we can do is we can select drums that are similar. So all the snares we have, we can hold Command and select all of these snares, grab them all and we can right click and we can actually group these within this group. And then we can rename this, call it snare. Now we have a group for all our snares. And an extra little tip is if you highlight all these and right click, make sure that color automatically is selected so that you can color code all of your drums. So we'll keep snare orange. Let's uh, change this kick to red. Uh, we don't need to group anything because there's just one kick sample we can go ahead and group our toms. All right, so now that we have all of these different drum cells grouped into groups and mapped out on our controller, now we can get back into Superior Drummer and route the audio out of Superior Drummer so that we can actually control it on independent channels. That's the whole point. So let's open up Superior Drummer. And one thing to keep in mind with Superior Drummer 3, as well as most plugins with multiple outputs, is that the default output one and two to be the master out of the plugin. Okay, so that's what we've been listening to this whole time is that the audio of all of these drums is being sent out output one and two of Superior Drummer into the MIDI track, right? And that's what we're hearing. So that's just to keep in mind that when you're routing the output of these individual elements that you don't wanna use output one and two, you wanna avoid it because that's the master out. All right, so let's go to the mixer tab in Superior Drummer 3. And if we go to this mixer menu in the top left-hand corner, there's a button that says apply multi-channel outputs. And if we do that, you'll notice that it automatically groups all of our outputs in terms of groups, which is super handy. So what this has done is it has created outputs for different groups of tracks. So all of these kick mics, there's three different mics on this kick drum. 
um, are going out the same output, which is great. Some of these I probably wouldn't put on the same, like the snare top and snare bottom are separate, which is great. Hi-hat, separate. Rack toms, I would probably separate these toms. All right, so you'll notice in Superior that when I hit these higher toms, that our rack tom one is coming up. And when I hit these lower toms, our floor tom one is coming up. So I would probably route the audio of every tom individually to their own channels, which is done here. But keep that in mind depending on what kit you have. And the reason we're not hearing audio is because all we hear is kick because kick is routed to one and two, which is the master out. And that's all that we have routed inside of Ableton, right? So all we're hearing is the kick on one and two. And we're actually gonna change this to an output that's not being used. So let's go over here. 2526 is the last one. So let's go with 2728. All right, now here comes the fun part. Now we want to make all of these drum pads that we've made on the drum rack receive various outputs from Superior Drummer that we've just routed out into a, a bunch of different outputs corresponding to what they are playing, okay? And the way you do that in Ableton is to use this thing called an external instrument. And just a fun fact, the external instrument device is typically used to send out MIDI from Ableton to an external piece of hardware. So it could be a synth, for example. So you could be playing or programming MIDI from Ableton, sending out that MIDI to that synth and then recording the audio back into Ableton. And that's its primary function, but we can use it for this as well. All right, so to find that external instrument, you wanna to go to instruments and then find external instrument here, and then click and drag that directly onto one of our chains. And then for now, I'm going to expand this view and you'll see that all of our chain groups are in Ableton's mixer view, which is super great. But let's focus in on Right now, everything I play, there's no audio, right? Because there's nothing routed. But let's go to our kick, okay? And I've already placed the external instrument here. And the first thing you want to pick is MIDI 2 and select drum rack. Okay, make sure that it's on superior drummer. And then we want to find the right output for our kick. So if we go back to superior, open it up. This is 2728, right? All of our kicks are going to that output. So if we go back to kick, we want to make sure that this is 2728, which is right here. And now if I close the pure drummer and I play this kick, we're getting the audio through the kick channel, right? So the same principle applies for all of these. We can actually just copy this external instrument, open up a group, paste it in that group, bring it to the top because why not? But then here, we need to change the audio to receive on the right channel. So let's bring back Superior Drummer 3. Let's find our snare top. All right, so for now, I've routed both the snare top and snare bottom. However, you could separate these just by creating more external instruments, more chain groups, and create whatever groups that you want for your drum kit. But let's keep on moving to the next part. So I'm going to copy this, move over to the toms. I'm going to paste here. All right, so I went ahead and did that with all of the chains in our drum rack. And now you'll notice that when I play the push to whatever drum I'm hitting will play the audio in the corresponding channel. So here's our kick. Here's our snare. Here's our hi-hat, our cymbal. And if you're wondering why when I hit the kick that you're seeing signal in the snare and the cymbals is because typically when you mic a real kit there's going to be bleed and that's kind of what gives it that realism and that's part of superior drummer three so that's part of why we want to do this all right and another thing that's super important with superior drummer three or anything that's emulating a real drum kit is that you're going to typically have room mics that really add that extra realism and give you that sense of space of a recording for drums however a room mic doesn't have a specific trigger for it to be triggered, right? It's kind of something that's recording everything in the room. So we can do that just as easily. We're just going to create another chain. We're going to rename this AMB for ambience and maybe make it uh, a nice pink. All right. And then for this, we're going to make sure to go back here and make sure to get all notes because a room mic is going to pick up absolutely everything, right? It's going to pick up the snare, toms, hi-hat, etc. And then from here, we're just going to, again, 
bring an external instrument from the drum rack. And then we've got to make sure that this output is the correct one for the ambient, which is 1314. So let's find that. All right, now that we've set that up, if we go ahead and solo this channel or any channel to just solo part of your drum kit, you can hear that this is just that room mic. All right, and this next step is super important. You wanna go ahead and hit this little save icon so you can rename this funk kit or whatever kit that you picked and make sure to save this so that all of the work we put in to create this, you can recall it at any time. All right, so the great thing with this setup is that you have the freedom to play your drum kit in Superior 3 or whatever plugin you're using with the Push 2 or whatever controller you're using. You can play in MIDI, you can sequence it in, you can even create a new MIDI clip, pencil it in, whatever you want to do. But then you have the added flexibility of being able to add effects on specific parts of your kit. So if you want to add like a compressor to your kick, you can simply drag a compressor here on the kick channel. Same with the snare. If you want to add a saturator or some other effect, you can throw it right here. And another quick tip is that if you go over here and you click this little R, you can actually create a return chain and you can actually send these groups to the return tracks in Ableton. And hey, if you're just getting started with music production and feeling completely overwhelmed by the whole process, or if you've been at this for a while and are having trouble finishing projects, or if you just want to get a glimpse inside my workflow, I've created a super easy to follow seven step framework that helps you go from your very first ideas all the way to a finished mix and master. It's super handy to have around the studio. So if you're interested in that, you can grab it in the description box below. And that wraps it up for this video. If you found it valuable, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. If you want to stay in tune for the next MetaMind Music transmission, hit that subscribe button and go ahead and check out some of the links below. I have a masterclass. I'm streaming on Twitch. You can book in a call to speak with me directly. All sorts of fun stuff. So give it a check out if you're interested and we'll talk to you in the next video. Spinning wheel of death, spinning wheel of death. It's the spinning wheel of death. It never lets you go. It brings you round and round in a colorful rainbow of destruction while you're trying to film a tutorial. Oh, damn.